Sandy's life is ruined after Diana steals his identity. Who the hell is this? If I had to guess, this is the person who stole your identity. To save his job, Sandy must travel to Florida to apprehend her. Get over here and give me your wrist. Okay. Now I have a plan. <laughs> but the road back to justice is never an easy one. In Identity Thief. Hi, I'm David. I'm Rachel. And I'm Salim, and we're here to talk about Identity Thief, the new road movie by Seth Gordon. We've all just seen it. David, why don't you start us off? It stars Jason Bateman as Sandy, who's a very nice family guy, and he's an accountant, and Diana is played by Melissa McCarthy, and she is a professional thief. She mm -hmm. steals Sandy's identity, and she proceeds to rack up huge amounts of charges on his credit card, <laughs> and she actually gets arrested and gets thrown in jail. And so the setup, like I said, is great, but it's just the premise that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And the premise is essentially that uh, Jason Bateman's character, Sandy, finds out who Diana is, and the only way he can save his job is at a VP at this big new company he's been hired at is to bring Diana back from Florida to Denver? Makes much, no sense! It makes absolutely no sense. You've got a premise that's ridiculous, but then the movie isn't ridiculous. So, right. yeah, so now you have something that's a little bit awkward. Like, mm -hmm. if we had a, just an over-the-top, broad comedy, yeah. you know, then I'd, I'd be willing to go with anything. But yeah. we have these moments that are a little bit peaking yeah. in terms of over the top, and then we've got like sort of grounded believability, so I, no. it's a little jarring. I know, I completely agree. I feel like the problem with this movie is that it straddles a line between trying to be extremely funny and just completely run of the mill. Because yeah. the script doesn't really give the audience or even the characters that much to work with. Going along with flimsy um, premises, we have other two word titles. We have Horrible Bosses, we have Hall Pass, we have Four Christmases. They all have a very flimsy um, premise, but trying to make it seem funny with the characters. Right. And it's the same thing in this movie, too. After the first 15 or 20 minutes, you either go with it or you don't. Mm -hmm. And for me, I went with it because of the amazing performances of our two lead characters. Not only do they have wonderful ad-libs in this movie, but the first time that they meet, they beat the snot out of each <laughs> other for like the first time five or ten minutes, which is really hilarious. And the bottom line is that this is a comedy, and for the most part, it's a really funny movie. Hey, hey, Acting is the is the best part of this yeah. like like you've all been they, saying. They say that. And because it's really about performance versus story. And for the most part, the, the story just is not there. And you can imagine Melissa McCarthy or Jason Bateman they're, looking at the script. Yeah, they're like, well, it's all right, no, 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 no. I, I know exactly what this scene needs. We're gonna make it funny, just yeah. move out the way. We got it. Right. Get these shoes at the same place you got the pants? No. Yeah. Clark said an EMT took him off a dead hobo, so. Come on. He's not going to need him back, so... Guy died in these? Good fit, huh? He's playing what could be a very stereotypical role, but he's playing it in a very real, very personable way. Because Absolutely. he is, he's this accountant, he is supposed to be the doormat. You never feel like he has some actory physicality, or like he's taking on a voice or doing something to be mousy. He is a regular guy, very relatable, who happens to sort of fit into this stereotypical niche. And what I loved about his character especially is that his character arcs so well. Yeah. He's a completely different character from the beginning to the end of the movie. And you believe it. You completely believe right. it. And and as for Melissa McCarthy as Diana, sure. she really is a con artist and she's very good at what she does and she seems to have no moral compulsions about what she does as well. And you kind of find out later on why she's the way she is. And what's great too is that like you have these movies where it's, oh, she's such a bad character and then, oh, she's a good character and the end no. and it's like this hokey sort of turn of events but and you here, don't have that you don't movie. have that because yeah. she's still she still got some of these wicked things that she does all the way through and a lot of times it really gets them out of trouble and even in the beginning like there is some kindness that comes through and it doesn't seem like it's manufactured it seems really genuine especially by the end of the movie she's really her character makes sense and you don't hate her there are some nice supporting roles mm -hmm. you have eric stone street from modern, modern family. family who plays a heterosexual <laughs> and does a pretty good job yeah, at it this must be walter, walter. hello howdy walt i'm big chuck hi there i gotta tell you this little margie is quite a lady i love that they have ti in this movie really <laughs> and i'll tell you why do you <laughs> He surprised me because he did not suck. I was expecting to okay. hate him in every single scene, be shaking my hand like, no T.I., you do not belong in a comedy. But surprisingly, he elicited some laughs. It makes our work much easier. What kind of work? That's our work. Oh, Very traditional. You know what I'm saying, Chuck? 
They're going to put your quote on the movie poster. Surprisingly, <laughs> he did not suck. I think we need to talk about the director now, Seth Gordon. He's done a lot of TV stuff, including Modern Family, oddly mm. enough. And I think that he kind of knows to get out of the way of his two actors. He tries to reel them in every once in a while, but for the most part, he balances the tone of the movie. You don't feel like things shift wildly. I've seen his very first film as a documentary, probably one of my favorite documentaries of all time, called King of Kong, which is basically a documentary about a guy trying to get the world record for Donkey Kong. Oh, okay. You know, I've heard of it. Very, I haven't seen nerd. it. It's a very nerd movie, but what's fascinating is that he is able to make a really interesting movie about something that probably a lot of people don't care about. No. And what made it interesting is about the it's about these two characters in this movie. And I you can see in this movie that that's his strength. Two characters two character that movie. carry a movie and that okay. really are funny and that are playing off of each other. Despite its ridiculous premise, this movie is saved by the hilarious comedic performances of Melissa McCarthy and Jason Bateman. I give it a see it. This film is good, but it doesn't reach the level of slapstick humor to make it truly great. I'm giving it a stream it. A weak story and flimsy plot is saved by the wonderful comic timing of Jason Bateman and Melissa McCarthy. See it. Our votes add up to two and a half tickets, which is a see it for Identity Thief. Right, cheers. cheers. I'll drink to that. I'll drink to that. Right, he hits her in the face with a guitar. <laughs> <laughs>